Good afternoon, PTTI students. I'd like to welcome you to the first edition of CNC with RMB. I'm your instructor, Ronald Batley, and uh, today we're going to do sort of a test run. We're going to run through uh, just a few trial things on our FlashCut CNC software, and I will guide you through creating a shape transmitting that to our computer assisted management program. We'll run through the simulation tool and I will show you how to turn that square we designed into a g-code for cuts. So why don't we go ahead and begin. We have our flash cut CNC uh, software program open on uh, my home computer here. As you can see, we have a slew of different icons, and as time progresses, we'll get into each one of these. Uh, today, we're going to keep it something basic, okay? Before we get started, I want to explain that uh, as we are doing our drawings, we have our y-axis in green, that's our vertical, and we have our x-axis in red. Okay. Typically the way that I set up the grids are each one of these squares is a quarter of an inch uh, in both length and width. It just makes it easier when we're doing our drawings if we could round to uh, those integers. So what we're going to go ahead and do is four by four square okay and look there's a few different ways we could do that one is we could click on line okay you see we have a parameters box that comes up on the side we have our start position y position we could enter the coordinates manually uh, say we wanted to start at one inch say one inch and we'll start at one inch oops back that up a little bit there all right and we can choose where this will end since we want to make it four it would end at five and with five and create a line but, Yay. however, we're going to keep it a little more simple today, okay? Let's go to our line icon, okay? And as I said, we're going to create a box that's 4x4. Four four. I'm going to start at X1, Y1. X1, Y1, and we're going to go up to 5, since we said 4 inches. Get a little click. We're going to roll over to 5. Give it a little click. Back down to 1. Give it a little click. And back to our home position, which in this case is 1, 1. Bam. So we have our square. Now, and in order to complete this shape, um, we just need to hit escape, and we're good. <clears throat> okay. Now, as I said, we're going to keep it simple uh, for today. We have our 4x4 four four square, and we're going to give this a file name. Save as... We'll call it four by four square. And I always like to put the date. Today's 04 07 2020. And we will save. Okay. So we. Basically, we have our drawing. What would happen is uh, once we lay our material down and we get to the process where we've created a G-code, it would cut this 4x4 square of material out. Okay. 
going into the cam position, you can see these dotted lines here. That's torch movement without the torch being on. As I've explained in earlier lectures, these would be signified by G00. This line and this line. Okay. The solid red lines, now these are actually going to be our cutouts. You'll notice the cutout sits just a little bit away from the material itself to account for the point zero three two uh, gap that's going to be caused from the torch burn. Uh, when we make a cut with the torch, it's just not going to be there. You can't take material away from something without excess. So as our torch travels down this path, it's going to cut point zero three two inches off of each side of our material. Okay. Now we can go to this simulation tool here, okay, kind of window in on it a little bit. We hit our play button, we can see exactly the sequence the machine would cut this part out. I'm going to rewind that so one more time. As I said, we're just working on something simple today. All right, and back to our drawing here. I know a question that might already be in your mind. If these red lines are our cut, why are they extended past the square? Well, the computer generates these lines uh, for the torch impact in the material. Uh, the machine interprets this if it impacts the torch right in the corner of the material uh, we we may uh, get uh, excessive burn and might not ignite at the right spot so it gives us this little extra to get started uh, and it also gives us a little extra to finish as it goes around just to ensure that we make a complete square cut okay so how would we transfer this to actually making a G-code to cut this material? What I like to do, okay, we're going to go to File, Save As. Uh, we're going to use the same file name, should be the last one, 4x4 square, 0407 -2020. Yes, we want to replace, okay? okay now what we're going to do create g-code file. We're going to label it the same thing. 4x4 four four square 04072020. Now the reason we do this is so our g-code files and our CAD files coincide with each other. Uh, you'd figure the machine would be set up to where we could just transfer the same file to all three, but it's not the case. CNC actually saves in a separate location than the CAD and CAM files. Okay. Give it about 10 seconds or so. Okay. Then we're going to go into CNC. Now, let's open up our file. And it goes in alphanumeric order. I'm sorry, numerical alpha order. So it just so happens our G code that we just generated is at the top of the list. Let's open it up. Okay. You see, we sort of have the same picture, uh, the same image that we had in CAM. Um, it's going to start at the home position, 0, 0. It's going to travel approximately to an inch. It's going to make the cut around, come down, and then it's going to return home. Let's take a look at the G code itself and see what we're looking at. And to do that, we would hit the pencil to edit G code. Okay, <clears throat> seems like a lot of numbers, and 
uh, from what I've taught you guys, you can see, as I said, we always start with G20. That's the start of a project. Uh, our second line, M106 H Plasma 1, that mechanical command, uh, command designates the equipment that we were going to use. In our case, it is the PowerMax 85 Plasma Cutter. Our third line is always going to be what mode we're in. We're in fabhead mode and we're going to cut. Okay, and uh, as for line number four, this is our point of origin line. Okay, now this is where things may get a little bit tricky. Okay, if you notice, we always want line number four and line number six to match, okay? And you can see they do not. Um, we can actually, well, there's a few different ways that we can do this. We could, we could leave it alone and let it cut and it would be fine, or we can take out what we don't need, um, and, um, well, let's say, let's, we'll just run through it, okay. All right, line number six, we've got X96600, Y96600, okay. You can see we have our X coordinate matches, but our Y does not. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and change this line to 966. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, we're going to save that. Okay, we're going to close this. We're going to see what happened there. All right. Now, <clears throat> you look closely, you see what disappeared. That little excess leg line that the computer decided that it needed. In reality, we don't need those. And down the road, it causes more problems than it's worth. Sometimes the machine gets confused. And we're, we're also going to adjust this one. Once we get to this point up here, the computer, like I said, gets confused. So it may actually cut a diagonal line down to the end here instead of here. So what we do is we manually go in and fix these. And, as these lectures progress, we'll get involved in this in a lot more detail. But, as I said today, we're going to try to keep it simple and just stick to the basics. Okay. So, what we've done so far is adjusted our point of origin to match the corner of our material. And now what we also need to do is fix it at the end of the code. Okay. So, as you can see... All right, our endpoint 966000966000, and again, it's not at a solid number because of the point zero three two inches that it's going to cut off on both sides. Um, when we're finished here, I can show you another way to generate this G code. Uh, actually, we may, we may save that for uh, tomorrow's lecture. Okay, so we notice our end cut does not match. 18, our X coordinate is 966000. Okay, but our end X cut coordinate is 831500. So what we need to do is go in and change that. 966000. Okay. Now everything matches. So we'll file, we're going to save, close it out to take a look. Now if you look, we have a solid line from our origin 00 to the start point at point zero nine six six six. Okay, we don't have any tails. It's going to go right to the corner, make these cuts, come around to the corner, Come back to the zero position. Now, there's a few more things that we need to do to complete this G code. Okay. 
Going back up to the top, G20, we start a project. Line number two, mechanical command. What type of equipment are we using? Power Max 85. Line number three, fab head mode, cut. Line number four, this is our point of origin. This is where our cut is gonna start, okay? We got that. G603, okay? This is the start of a shape. In our case, the shape is a square. You guys probably notice what's missing already, okay? There's nothing to signify when we should turn the torch on, okay? So we're going to go ahead and manually enter that. After we designate we're starting a shape, we need to turn, tell the torch to turn on. The command to tell the torch to turn on is M50 semicolon torch on okay now our torch is is going to fire uh this first line it's going to start at x.966000 y.966000 basically one one okay that's where it's going to start to burn and as you can see it's going to end up at around five okay another thing notice the speed set at 75 okay that's way too high as we talked about for sheet metal it's going to be around 40 45 so you know for the sake of this lecture we'll pretend it's sheet metal okay so change the speed to 45 okay now we know that Number 20 is our last cut command because it's a G01. G01 is linear movement with the torch being on. We know this is our last cut. So, after this point, we need to tell the torch to turn off. Add a command line. The command to turn the torch off is M51, torch off. Okay. As I said, uh, after we turn the torch off, it's good practice to go ahead and raise the torch. That's a linear movement without the torch being on, which would be G00, okay? So we enter G00, space Z. And to raise the torch, it's negative, negative 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Computer likes you to use six decimal digits for um, each command. It's not necessary, but to make everything uniform, it's good practice. So just to run through, start of our shape, mechanical command for what equipment we're using, fab head mode, what cut, point of origin, start of shape, turn the torch on, from 7 down to 20, that's our square. Uh, the computer, when it generates G codes, it will use two or three lines per cut line. It doesn't mean that it's going to cut extra lines, it's just the way the computer interprets the cut lines. Line number 20 was our final cut. We tell the torch to turn off, we raise the torch, and finally, as we always do, we tell the torch to return to the home position, which is always going to be X0, Y0. We're going to save. And if we were at the shop, we would do a test run. And we would get a perfect square. So, tomorrow we're going to dive in a little bit deeper into this stuff. Uh, we will go through... I'll talk to you guys and see if you want to spend some more time uh, focusing focusing on CAD first or if you want to move into manual G-code programming first. We'll actually spend the least amount of time on CAM. Uh, really the only features that we can use with that are the cut sequences. We can alter those and it's also nice for the simulation tool. The primary uh, functions we will use will be the computer-aided drafting to actually design our parts and then CNC to utilize the G-code to cut these parts. I think we're going to cut it off here for today. 
Uh, just let me know what you guys think. As I said, you know, I'm just a little nervous. This is my first time doing anything like this, so I hope we are able to uh, gain some useful information out of this. Um, from this point on, the, the uh, videos will probably be shorter and we will have uh, some more interaction with you guys as the videos progress. Maybe we'll do a short video. You guys can tell me your thoughts. We'll continue the videos and we'll kind of keep it in that format. That way you can guys can ask questions and we can make sure that everybody's on the same page. Uh, on a side note, you guys, uh, I know it's difficult doing everything uh, with long distance education. I'm hoping we can use this as a tool to uh, give you guys a little more visual aids, uh, some more exposure to what we'll actually be doing, and uh, hopefully before too much longer we're, uh, we're, we're back in the classroom. But um, for uh, what we have available and um, you know, the interaction that we've had, uh, I want you guys to know um, everybody's doing a great job and I'm really proud of you guys.